Hi, I'm uh, Steve Malkmus from Music World, and um, I'm at Amoeba, and this is what was in my arms, because I didn't use the bag. First of all, I found this. It's called Luis Perez, uh, or he is. I don't know much about Mexican experimental music from 1981, fusing traditional and electronic instruments. The label's called Mr. Bongo, which is, that doesn't necessarily engender trust in me, that name, because bongos, I tend to think of as kind of absurd. And it also sounds a little like Mr. Bungle, which might be a good group, but I, you know, that name scares me. There's a lot of places you could put this record in this store. And it looks kind of cool. I mean, I like the graphics. I like the kind of DIY aesthetic, but curate, like made nice, you know? That's kind of what the world's like today, whether it be hamburgers or private presses. I went to the World Music Zone and that's what I picked up. And then I went over to the hardcore area. These are um, birds in a row. They're French and they're on a label called Death Wish. This is from the punk um, region of your store and it had an Amoeba recommendation on it. I do tend to trust recommendations in bookstores and record stores. Maybe even here more, you know, at bookstores, usually there's an employee that's, you know, really into literature still. I'm assuming in the hardcore section of Amoeba, there's some connoisseurs there, because I don't really know what's going on in hardcore music 2019. I played in front of people in 1981 in the first wave of uh, American hardcore bands in the shadow of the Sex Pistols and things like that. And I would like to hear what people are doing. This, this looks a bit like it's gonna have a modern production value, which I might not like, you know, as much as Fly in a Wild DIY hardcore that I'm more used to, but I'll also be able to appreciate the uh, value of it if it's well done, it just might not be in my lane. Okay, now I know this is in my lane. This is Bill Orcutt. This will not be produced in a high-tech manner because it says that he recorded it in the main stairwell of uh, an elementary school in Miami, Florida. And Bill is was the guitarist in Harry Pussy. Harry Pussy was a group active in the 90s primarily that I know you're all familiar with. But if, you, if you're not, they were a noise band with a really uh, awesome performance element, you know. Their lead singer and drummer, she was this incredible, and Bill was a guitarist, and they played some of the best concerts I saw in the 90s. And he has gone on to play deconstructed acoustic guitar with a couple strings missing. I uh, also used to play with only five strings when I was a younger person, so I relate to that. I relate to the way he plays guitar, and I think he's one of the best guitarists in the world, so I'm sure this is gonna be good. If you look closely, you can see that it looks like the A string's missing. I don't know how he tunes it, but obviously it's gonna make a different um, patterns and new problems to answer when you're playing. On his records, I don't notice the strings missing. You know, I just hear an original phrasing and tone and like a cool dude. Then here we got uh, Opal. Opal was a band that formed in the ashes of two LA or at least uh, West Coast bands. One was the Dream Syndicate. The lead singer, her name's Kendra Smith. She uh, was the bass player in Dream Syndicate. The guitarist is Dave Roback, um, Amoeba mainstay with uh, Nazi Star, but first in the Rain Parade. After the Rain Parade and Dream Syndicate disintegrated, um, or no, Dream Syndicate kept going, 
without her. They formed a group, and this is their first EP, I believe. Later, they made an album called Happy Nightmare Baby, which is on SST, and it's, I thought it was just an amazing record of its time. It had kind of a Mark Bolin, Chugal mixed with Doomsday Doors sound and kind of goth. I consider Kendra to be sort of a proto Joanna Newsom, at least in her witchy vibes. And um, the guitarist is really good, as you know. He's tasteful, doesn't overplay. And there's one show of them playing on YouTube. They're playing at um, like UC San Diego or something. And it's a little grim, you know, like the student section, but there's not much to find of them on the internet, which is good and bad. I mean, they sound okay. They're just kind of getting started, you can tell, and it's still, it's still like Paisley underground era. It's also in the time of early REM and college rock of that time. I guess they fit in that, but they're trippier and I think they're an underrated group. This one is Karl Orff. He's a German composer from the 20th century. I've always liked his music, specifically some of his uh, music for children. He was quite involved in developing a philosophy for teaching children in schools music theory. And it's really interesting that music he makes. When you hear um, German children from the 1930s and 40s and 20s singing, you have these associations with National Socialism or something, which is unfortunate because I don't think Karl Orff has any. It's just, you know, what we have in our minds as Americans from that time. When you hear German kids, it makes you think of the boys of Brazil or something kind of dark. You know you have a double? Exactly like me? I do do that, but I still get over it. This uh, is an opera he made called uh, Der Monde. It's supposedly based on some gr grim uh, folk tales. It has a very uh, cool album cover, I think. And, and I, like I said, I had read that he used some of the theories from his kinder music in composing this opera. And it's in mono, too. I like mono, monophonic records. I don't know about you. Onwards, last one. This is Prince Thomas is his name. He's from Norway. He's an electronic music producer, known for a variety of, to me, um, a relatively uh, palatable and approachable original tunes in dance music realm. From what I've read, he did it kind of quick and not overthinking things and just going back to the things he really loves. That's the narrative of the, the record. And I heard one of the songs called Feel the Love and it was positive party music. Something you would hear in a club with your friends. And it's like maybe a bit housey. I'll find out. It's called Ambitions. I think it's new. Well, I found that song on the internet, Feel the Love, and it seemed like it just come out. But he's legit. I mean, he's got a, a publisher. He's published by Sony. So he must be a big star. <laughs> Sony seems to own all the big acts these days, like Vampire Weekend and um, Arcade Fire and uh, LCD sound systems. Boom. <laughs> There's a mainstream media guy that says that. He goes, boom. He's like a right, a Fox guy. All right. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me. A boy cannot catch a break. It's only luck and take, take, take.